And now for our feature presentation. The last Winnie the Pooh movie before this one was Christopher Robin, the live action one where an adult version of Christopher is reunited with Pooh and friends. While the plot is bare bones and there is nothing going for it that much, it did have some charm. Prior to that, the last Winnie the Pooh movie was in 2011, and so far Disney's last 2D animated film. It was very enjoyable and entertaining, only clocking in at 1 hour and 2 minutes. It was destroyed at the box office by the Deathly Hallows, but me and my family took my little brother to see it as his first movie. I remember liking it for what it was, especially this scene. Oh, of all things, why didn't we think to bring a rope? Oh, well, there is this rope. And six, there. And now you can all get out. Oh, good grief. Tie them together, Piglet. Can you tie a knot? I cannot. Ah, so you can knot. No, I cannot knot. Not, not? Who's there? Poo? Poo who? No. Now that Pooh and friends are not held by copyright and legal issues, it's fair game. Anyone can make a Winnie the Pooh movie. So of course the first thing we're gonna get is a horror movie that takes the beloved fluffiness of the original movies and turn it into a bloody horror film. From the looks of the trailer, it's so blatantly obvious that the movie is going to be bad. That's okay, as long as it's so bad it's good. This movie was stupid incoherent, pointless, and just bad. But sadly, not even good bad. The movie takes itself way too seriously to even be considered good. I thought maybe if the movie didn't take itself too seriously and laughed at itself and knew what it was, then I could have enjoyed it a lot more. Similar to Megan. Megan knew what it was and turned out great, a lot better than anyone expected. Winnie the Pooh is such an icon of purity and heart that seeing him as a bloodthirsty maniac sounds like a joke pitch a friend would make and you all laugh at it making scenarios in your head. Then you have the weird guy who's starting to take it serious, plotting out the entire cinematic universe. The only thing stopping me from giving this a 1 out of 10 is the fact that you and some buddies can watch this and have a few chuckles. Also there's a really good shot right there. That's like the only good shot, cinematography wise. The budget was $100,000 and you can tell. The masks look extremely cheap and that combined with the human looks of the characters are laughable. You can tell most of the money was focused on the bloody kills but they never come off as natural into the plot. There's one kill in the movie that proves, okay, they had the idea to do a cool death scene like this but didn't know how to get there. Let's just have the girl who's tied up wake up, piglet on her and poo in the car and let her get run over. The directors were like, I don't know how we can get there, but we can just do it. We'll figure it out. All the deaths in the movie feel like that. You won't remember any of the actresses or actors' names except for Pooh, Piglet, and Christopher Robin. There's so many stupid moments that are baffling and happen just to happen. Like, do you- Okay, do you really care about spoilers in this movie? No, didn't think so. The beginning states that they turned feral after Christopher left for college. They did not state anything about Pooh having the ability to chop people's faces off with his hands. No, seriously, he can slice a person's face off with his bare hands. They didn't mention he could also summon a swarm of killer bees. There's no story in this movie, so it feels aimless an excuse just to make this movie happen. However, there's moments where plot lines are being shown and then they don't get brought up at all. Like, these two characters are in a room with rose petals, the other set up, and they go, It's too soon. And she gets sad. And you don't hear about that for the rest of the movie. Winnie the Pooh, Blood and hu Honey... Winnie the, Pooh, Winnie the Pooh Blood and Honey is a movie that I wanted to be so bad it's good, embracing its cheesiness and wackiness and outlandishness, but it never does it. It takes itself too seriously, therefore making it just bland and very awful. But don't worry, because there's an end credit moment that says Winnie the Pooh will return. I mean, what are they going to do next, Bambi or Peter Pan? Ah, oh, shit. Yeah. 